I introduced IP adapter in my previous origami style dance video, explaining in detail how to set different parameters for each node. However, after the custom node author updated to version 2, many users found that the nodes in the new version were somewhat different from the previous ones. Workflows saved before would result in errors when run. I received many requests for help. Coincidentally, I found the new features added in version 2 of IP Adapter very practical, so I decided to create a few videos specifically demonstrating how to use it. This will include installation and update of the new version, model downloads, fixing workflows from the old version, migration of styles and compositions, and comparing Instant ID with Face ID to see which one is better. However, due to the limited time, I will divide it into several videos and only be able to cover up to migration of styles and compositions in today's video. Interested users can follow along. The image gallery shown at the beginning of the video is the style transfer I did using IP adapter, referencing different artistic styles for image-to-image -image generation. If you also need such materials, you can visit this website to find your favorite styles. This site has compiled over a thousand artistic prompts by artist Ricker, or you can use Zozozo's Art Gallery Custom Node, which offers references from five major categories including artists, artistic movements, artistic media, camera lenses, and film cameras. Now let's talk about installing and updating the custom node. If you downloaded it through Git clone, simply run git pull in the directory. Otherwise, you can download the latest package from GitHub or a cloud drive. Unzip it into the custom underscore nodes folder. Next, start downloading the models. First, the clip underscore vision model has two versions, trained on data from SD 1.5 and SDXL. You can download them according to the checkpoints you are using. New users can download from the address in the description of this video. While returning users should double check the file names and ensure they are placed in the slash comfy UI slash model slash clip underscore vision directory. Next is the IP adapter model. From the name, you can tell if it is suitable for SD1.5 or SDXL. Users with ample bandwidth can download both. Personally, I have all of them. Except for the deprecated ones. These models need to be placed in the slash comfy UI slash models slash IP adapter directory, following the same naming convention as clip underscore vision. If you want to use Face ID related features, you need to install the Insight Face Python library. Many users previously encountered installation failures in their environments, but now there's a simpler method. You can directly download the WHL file corresponding to your Python version from this GitHub address. If you're not sure about your version, you can use the command python underscore embedded backslash python.exev to check, then install it like this. Apart from this, make sure to download these models as well. The ones mentioned above are checkpoints, and the ones below are LORAS. They should be placed in different locations. I'll include all the download addresses mentioned in my description, including from Hugging Face, GitHub, and the cloud drive I shared. We've covered how to install and update. Let's talk about fixing previously saved workflows. When you load an old workflow, you'll likely see an error message, IP adapter apply node not found. Another type of error is when it doesn't prompt, but fails during execution. The solution for both is the same. Add a new IP adapter advanced node. Reroute the lines from the previous nodes to this new node. Delete the old node. And then run it again. You can see, I have no errors when executing the fixed workflow. Now, let's demonstrate a new feature that I find very good, style transfer and composition transfer. Often, we load IP adapter just to reference the style or composition of an image. In previous versions, we couldn't precisely select the dimensions that IP adapter references. We had to accept the entire input image and rely on masking or lower weights to control it, which was quite laborious. However, the custom node author discovered that on SDXL, it's possible to select only the style or composition for IP adapter to reference by setting its operating level. This feature is quite useful, and I'll demonstrate it below. Start by loading a default text to image workflow, and change the model to the SDXL model I often use, Juggernaut XL. 
fill in the positive prompts, negative prompts, change the image size to the Excel default of 1024 by 1024. Fix the seed. Adjust the steps to 30. Change the sampling method to dpmpp underscore 2m with Keras, then run it. The larger 30-step image will take some time to generate, so please be patient. Once it's done, you'll see an image of a girl in silver armor walking in a sunflower field. Now, I'll demonstrate how to use IP adapter for style migration based on this image. Note that this feature is only applicable to SDXL, and SD1.5 does not support it in principle. Add an IP adapter, advanced node. There are six parameters here. Weight is easy to understand. The higher the value, the closer the result will be to the reference image, with one not being the limit. You can adjust it according to your needs, but higher weights often lead to over-rendered images. Generally, starting at 0.8 is stable. The weight underscore type has many options, indicating how IP adapter will work on UNet blocks. For example, EZEN means the weight on input blocks is higher than on output blocks, while weak input indicates that all input blocks have low weights. This time, we are doing style transfer, so just select style transfer directly. Combine underscore embeds determines how multiple reference images are combined. When there's only one reference image, keep it default but with multiple images, you may choose average or add. Start and end specify when IP adapter intervenes and exits. IP adapter should enter early, especially when you choose a deterministic sampler like DPMPP2M. If start is later than 0.5, it's basically ineffective, but it's best to exit before 0.8 to avoid negative effects on image quality. Embeds underscore scaling doesn't have a significant impact on image generation. For weights below 1, keep it default with V only, and for weights above 1, you can try K plus mean, V, with C penalty. Add an IP adapter unified loader node, which is a new addition in version 2. Its purpose is to solve the issue of users selecting the wrong model and corresponding clip. Inside this node, there are several pre-integrated combinations and it also includes helpful notes. Here, I'll choose plus, which is robust. Although it may not always be the most suitable, it's definitely a good starting point. It can automatically switch based on whether you select the SDXL or SD1.5 checkpoint, so you no longer need to manually change it. Connect the model output on the right to this node, and the model input on the left to the checkpoint loader above. Next is the load image node, where you upload the desired style reference image. I'll use the Starry Sky by Van Gogh. Add another prep image for Clip Vision node to process the reference image. Here, choose Pad, of course. You can also use IP adapter tiled mentioned in the previous video to read the entire image, but since I'm only referencing the style this time, I won't use it. Some users have asked me if sharpening should be added. I think it's like adding MSG in cooking. A little bit is nice, but not too much as it can make the image unnatural. Now, integrate the IP adapter process into the natural image workflow above, and add a Riscale CFG node to restore the CFG to its normal level. Connect the ports on both sides of the node. With that, our entire workflow is set up. Click Generate. And quickly. An image with a starry sky style is generated, resembling a medieval Milan oil painting. Without changing the parameters, let's try a few other styles. Copy these two nodes. Paste them in a new position. Reconnect them. Change the style image to watercolor. And click Run. Let's speed it up. Comparing it to the previous starry sky version, the differences between watercolor and oil painting are quite noticeable. Both could be made into postcards and sent out. Let's try a Studio Ghibli style this time, with its iconic blue sky and white clouds, as if it's watching over Howl's moving castle in the sky. Finally, let's try a neon-lit fur-colored kitten, 
and the generated image's tones match the reference quite well. The confident girl in silver armor is moving forward in a pink-toned sunflower field. Apart from natural images, we often need to use IP adapter for style migration in image-to-image -image generation. Among the images generated earlier, I particularly like the watercolor style, so I'll keep that as a style reference for image generation. Delete the empty latent image node and add a VEAN code and load image node. Load an image, my goal is to change its style. Let's move the original image, reference image, and final product nodes together for easy comparison later. When generating images, I recommend setting IP adapter's weight to above 1, I'll use 1.5. Modify the prompts corresponding to this original image and set sampler's denoise to 0.65. Click Generate. Speeding it up. The result is out, and I'm very satisfied. It's completely different from the original image's real style. The use of watercolor colors is excellent, creating transparency and depth, giving a harmonious and peaceful feeling. The style transfer effect is very good, but what about composition transfer? Let's try it out. Change the image to image workflow back to the text to image workflow, delete these two nodes. Add an empty latent node with a size of 1024 by 1024. And include the composition reference workflow. Copy and paste these three nodes and complete their connections. Here in IP adapter, change weight underscore type to composition transfer, SDXL. Keep the weight at 1.5. Composition migration is not very noticeable at low weights, as I mentioned when discussing parameters. Embeds underscore scaling should be changed to K plus mean, V, with C penalty at high weights but I forgot to do that earlier when doing image to image. Let's include the desired composition reference here. Click run, speed it up. The result is out, and the main subject in the picture is on the right side, similar to the reference image. Let's switch to a reference image where the subject is on the left side. Click run. And now our subject has moved from the right side to the left. If you simply want to move the subject, you can easily do so by drawing directly in an image or using another tool. For example, draw an object on the right side of the image, save it, then use it as a reference. Click Generate, speed it up, to see the results. The subject in the center of the image is slightly smaller than before, but it still appears on the right side of the image according to our reference. Then we change the reference image to have the subject on the left side, and jump to the results, the generated image matches the reference. Personally, I feel that composition transfer is not as stable as style transfer. Although it may seem okay here, hitting the target, in reality, this is just a simple scenario. For complex compositions, such as creating a version of The Last Supper with Cats, using only this method won't work. I've experimented with it, and it's best to use it in conjunction with control net depth and pose. Alright, that's it for today's video. In the future, I'll demonstrate the use of Face ID and IP Adapter V2, and also compare it with Instant ID to see which one is more accurate. Stay tuned if you're interested. See you next time.